So here's a person that quit his job to make games. And I myself quit my job to make games a long time ago. I think it's been now almost three years. And I have realized that maybe that wasn't the best decision. Or I should have at least figured out a way so that I could earn money on the side while doing game development. Maybe part-time working and part-time game development. Or I should have been 100% sure that my game will definitely not take longer than a set period of time and i'm a hundred percent sure that that is going to happen which if you are new to game development is 100 percent not gonna happen i was 100 percent sure when i quit my job that i will finish my game in six months i really thought i could do it and to give you an idea of how the game looked back then the first devlog two years ago that i ever did this is what i had in the beginning <laughs> when i thought i could finish my game in six months three year anniversary incoming yeah so like to give you an idea of why i thought that number one i was able to draw text on screen number two was i had units with hp bars and number three was they could attack each other and so i was like oh, damn i already have everything i need for a tower defense game now i just need to program in projectiles and i'm good you know program in some upgrades and then i'm done because that's all you need to do when you make a tower defense game, right? <laughs> well, I was wrong. Well, I wasn't wrong, but I was wrong. If you make a very basic tower defense game, that's essentially what you need. You need a number for how much damage a tower does. You need a cost associated with that tower. Maybe you have tiles where you place the tower on and then you give it a range. And how much does the range increase based on upgrades? Oh. An attack range, an attack speed. How fast does it attack? These five things are the things that you need for a tower. And then for enemies, well, all you need to give them in a very basic tower defense game, how do they look? If you have no sprites, you just, I don't know, you start with the circle, then you do a quad and you make the circle bigger. You can make very, very basic shapes in the beginning and you just give the enemies movement speed and health. And then all you need to do after that is create a path where they walk to and when they reach the end of the path then you take damage and if you take enough damage you lose it's actually really simple however i'm an idiot <laughs> and that was too simple for me i didn't want to just damage i wanted to have fire ice physical lightning and true damage and i wanted to have armor cold lighting fire resistances oh and i also wanted to have cooldown reduction and then i was like hmm since i now have cooldown reduction how about i add in abilities that the enemies can use should be easy to weeks <laughs> and like as I added more and more of these concepts to the game. It just grew and grew and grew. And the code required to add these in just became more and more and more. It's called scope creep. And so this is how six months from a very simple idea turned into almost three years at this point. Target selection is also something you want to add. Exactly. However, I'm now at a point where I'm almost financially stable with side stuff that i do and streaming and youtube where i can take that extra time but if we talk about quitting your job that's a dumb idea because you're setting yourself up for failure especially if you're inexperienced and how can you fail well because you will most likely release your game too early if that happens and then the game will probably not do very well because you didn't take time enough to figure out if is the game actually good or not that takes a long time too how does it play is it fun to play placing units just placing units is a big thing that you can spend a lot of time on you know uh, i changed my way of placing units a lot even just a second ago we worked on the colors for the circle here this can change multiple times. You could spend so much time on this. You know, do you place units on the road? Do you not place units on the road? You can get lost in these things. And if there's all of these things that you have to do and you are inexperienced, well, how do you make a decision? You can only make a decision by testing out. And if you then, you know, you made a decision and you're like, okay, that's what I'm going to do. And after that, someone comes in and plays your game and says, well, this is completely dumb. 
I can't play your game. It's totally frustrating. I don't want to play this anymore. Now you have to evaluate you wait whether you want to keep it in the game or change it or completely remove it. And that takes time too. And so it is better, especially when you don't know whether you can do every single aspect of your game yourself. Let's say you use an engine and you code everything in the game. You don't have any affinity to art. Well, you have a job. Now you can pay someone to do the art for you. You don't have to, you know, count your money all the time to make sure that it lasts enough you have enough money to ease and you have enough money to buy someone to make art for you and so quitting your job to make games is a nice dream idea but i'm telling you from my own experience without going into too much detail because i don't like talking about money you can set yourself up for a lot of stress and then ultimately a dream can become a nightmare so you have to be careful if you have money everything becomes that much more simple just pay someone to do the art just pay someone to do the sound effects if you don't like the person switch the person pay someone else to do the sound effects maybe in the future you build a bond and you make games together now you share the revenue stuff like that that's how you can meet people take it from someone that made all of these mistakes because i did i can't pay someone to make sounds at the moment i can't pay someone to make art at the moment i have to do everything myself that takes a longer time you can actually be faster while having a job, making your own game, than quitting your job and working on your game full time. And also take, in, take into account the creator of Stardew Valley, one of the best game developers, single game developers, had an affinity to music. He was doing music a long time before he started making his game and he had a job. Uh, I think it was like a, not a full time job, but a part time job. Ich habe sehr weit ausgeholt dafür, ja, in Englisch. Aber, but that's essentially my thoughts on this. And let's see what he has to say. He also quit his job three months ago. Void Heat. His game seems to be a 3D, I would guess, Unity game. Devlog number one. And it looks like if we just take a random sample, that's not his game. That's his game. Now, is it a Unity though? He doesn't have it on Steam yet. I think it's unreal. Or it is unreal. It could also be unreal. Or maybe Godot, but I don't think so. Let's see what he has to say. All right, let's do this one last time. My name is Daniel, and I've quit my full-time job in favor of full-time indie game development. Mm -hmm. If you try to find a video with the title, I quit my job to make indie There's games, you'll probably find dozens and dozens oh, of yeah. such videos, and mine is not different. Wait, what? I know there are a lot of people who want to quit their jobs and pursue a full-time game development idea. dream. But it's not Unless that easy. Sure. Some people just can't afford this risk, especially if they have to support their families, pay the bills, or simply can't. I didn't even go into that. Yeah, if you have a family, that's even even more crazy. Yeah. Spend several years without income for the sake of illusory dream that will most likely turn out to be disappointment and bring only pain and suffering. Besides, making a successful game is a challenging task, and now. When companies fire more and more of their employees, it might not be good time to do something like this. So it's understandable that almost always you will receive advice like don't leave your job and work on your game as a hobby. I won't argue with this, it's probably the right decision, but let me share my feelings, announce myself as a new developer in the arena and talk about my plans for the mm -hmm. future. If you are in the similar situation and you are looking... I mean, maybe he has saved up a lot of money that will last him for years. Because that's what you will need to do. And if you live in Germany, you get about... It depends on, on how long you have worked. But for about a year, maybe longer, you will get supported by the government when you quit your job. So it's like you still have income. It's less than before. But the government pays you essentially because you're unemployed. And you have been employed before. So that could be... And now it's not the best strategy. But that's a strategy that people use. It's free government money, at least in Germany. Yes. Be right back moving to Germany. For advice or a tip, you probably won't find it here. As I said, every person has different cases. And who am I to tell you what to do? But you might feel the same and gain some inspiration and motivation out of this. So, I feel like my time is passing by and I'm wasting it. In okay. the future, it will be really hard to make my dream come true. I felt like I'm moving in the wrong direction. My learning process is really slow. And even if I dedicate all my spare time to game development, it will take forever to get the result. Okay. While other yeah, but that sounds more like his game is the scope of the game is too big. Fun, doing cool stuff, designing games, I was left behind. 
Such thoughts have haunted me for a long time. I think now while I'm still not that old, while I have some savings, some game development skills and no major responsibilities, I must take this risk and try, otherwise I'm gonna be stuck. For me it feels like now or never, it still might be a mistake and after some time it might... Actually, that was the same reason I quit my job. I was like, okay, I'm 30, almost 30 years old, I was 28 at the time, I think. No, I've not been doing this for... I quit my job three years ago. Then that's when I was 31. Yeah, I was 31 years old. I saw my life going in a direction where I didn't want it to go to. And I told myself, this is not what I want. I want to make games. I've always wanted to make games. And yeah, he's in the, probably in the same situation. He thinks now or never. But you can still do now or never by being smart with what you use your money for. Because you can use and invest that money that you earn from your job into the game. And you will be faster. You can be faster. Most likely, yeah, you can be a lot faster than someone that has to do everything themselves. I realized that it wasn't a good idea. But I believe that trying is better than yeah. just missing See, the opportunity. That's exactly what I thought myself too. I was like, okay, so if I don't quit my job now and try, when I lie, lay on my bed and I think back and I never did it, I would be disappointed and i was like i'd rather fail and have no money and then get a job again than not try now because trying and making a mistake is better than not trying at all at least if everything goes wrong i hope i'll find another job yeah on this channel i'm it's going to idea. share the development process my thoughts maybe some tutorials and general stuff about games and game development so now when i spilled everything out and the boring part of the video is over, let me introduce the project that I'm working on. So it is a first-person roguelite rhythm shooter game. Right now In it's pretty raw, it has only a couple of enemies, weapons and buffs, but the basic game loop is implemented. The game is intended to be pretty simple. Kill At least this game looks better than my game. <laughs> miss with the gun, upgrade yourself and move on. All this with a cool modern music like this. Sounds like he's making a Survivor's clone in 3D. I think Asmongold is making that too. Something like that, yeah. Doesn't this exist? It's a Survivor's clone. Oh, not this. <clears throat> so, in okay. the future, I'm going to add abilities, more buffs, weapons, enemies, progression, a cup. Fire code lightning damage, true damage, physical damage, fire code lightning resistances, armor. Yeah, what else are you gonna add? Just wait. Bosses and different I feel like I'm watching a deja vu right now. Levels. So, this is the basic introduction. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to share all the details <laughs> here because the project is still in the early stages and everything might change. If you are interested in this project, or if you just want to know how it's going to be different from games like Metal Health Singer or Bullets Per Minute, check out my Discord. I also have other socials. I would be really grateful if you follow them too. Yes, so this is how you plan on supporting yourself with YouTube and Patreon. Does he stream? Since I don't have any income right now, yeah. I set up a Patreon page where you can support me if you want. Yeah. Each month I'm going to put there some of my Unity and Unreal Engine assets from my games. Mm -hmm. And that's Unity all that and I wanted to say for now. Thank you for watching the video till the end. Subscribe to check if I died from starvation. Bye. Yeah, yeah, that's what I was gonna hey everybody, say. Everybody, it's Julian. No, and no, right. no, shut Let's... up. Okay, sorry about that. So this is his support. Well, how do you say that? How do you say that in English? I know there's a word for this. It's not a support structure. It is... Not an infrastructure. I just don't know the word. Like, I'm not natively English. It is how it is. So this is his whatever that's called in English. It's basically a net of that supports you that you build up over time. Guten Mittag, bitch. Guten Mittag, brother. Um, so this is Void Heat. And we can tell from the links, hopefully he has them here too. He has a Twitter, a Patreon, a Discord and a Reddit. And the most important one, if you want to survive, for him at the moment, is Patreon and YouTube. If we take a look at the entire views of his channel, he currently has 30,000 views on YouTube. Which, by the way, doesn't pay you. Pay your bills. He has three posts, two tiers on Patreon. It doesn't say how many joined, but that might be censored. I would assume that 
he has like one or two Patreons, maybe three to five. But since he's male, that pays a big part in this shit as well. I can guarantee you that it's not a lot of supporters. If he was female, he would have had a lot more supporters. That's just how it works. So he, just like me, uh, with this stuff, especially in the beginning, you get like cents, okay? So I would have loved if... He would have gone into more of the financial side of things. So these are his income streams. And so far he's providing one income stream. Which um, unless you're very successful in that one income stream. You're setting yourself up for failure. What you can do oftentimes is spread yourself over multiple income streams. And then you have a lot of strings to pull from. To make the likelihood of you failing less likely. And so for example to give you an idea. I tried a lot and failed at Patreon. I actually didn't try that much. I also realized that you can essentially have the same thing for Kofi. But you can see like I don't hide it. It's very little money. In the beginning I didn't touch this at all. But there have been one or two supporters from the very beginning that have been with me. And one time in my life not too long ago. I was literally running on minus money and I couldn't afford to buy food. The Patreon money saved me that month. And that was just one income stream. Then another income stream that I recommend anyone to do that's making a game. Put your game on itch.io. Over time, now it stopped happening because I stopped... Opt or, or, let me see here. This is really this is ridiculous. I stopped advertising my game on itch.io, but for a long time... I earned money with games I made on itch.io. I have earned about $80, which is nothing, I know, but it's still something. You spread yourself thin and test out different streams of revenue to hopefully not die. We can subscribe and see how many videos he's gonna make, but let's see videos. What was the la latest video? Devlog number four, 400 views two weeks ago, mm -hmm, one month ago. So that's looking more like the numbers I get or got on my devlogs oh yeah first and foremost the first devlog always gets the most views most of the time second you can't make too many devlogs because then you don't have enough time to work on your game if you don't make any devlogs you're not bringing enough attention to your game if you're not successful he is actually really successful with his first devlog but it doesn't matter not much because he needs to consistently have the income or the views which is difficult to do. I wish him all, all the best of the luck. All best of... How do you say that? I wish him... How do you say that? I wish him all the best. Is it just all the best? I wish him the best of luck. All the best. All best of luck. I wish him the best of luck. Yeah. I want to quit my job and make games now. Brother. You wish him the best of luck. I wish him the best of luck. Yes, of course I wish him the best of luck. 